It was early morning. The type of tranquility that comes after a long night's labor, I just poured my first cup of coffee. My phone buzzed on the kitchen counter. It came from Rachel Vanessa's best friend. We weren't close. But the language was strange enough to capture my attention. Happy anniversary, Logan. You deserve to know the truth. Attached was a picture. My hands almost crushed the phone when I saw it. Vanessa, my wife of eight years, in a dimly lit pub, engaged in a kiss with another man. The caption read Dylan. As I glanced at the television, my gut tightened into knots. Dylan is a guy half my age. My mind raced, attempting to make sense of everything. However, the vision was scorched into my head. I had always prided myself on my calmness, but I could feel it crumbling. Under the weight of this discovery, I needed answers, and I was not going to acquire them from Vanessa. Not yet, I phoned Rachel. She took up the second ring. Her voice is fatigued, yet forceful. I couldn't keep lying for her any longer. Logan Rachel claimed she had been seeing him for months. I did not know how to tell you. Her comments struck like a freight train. Why now do I demand it? My voice is harsher than I expected. Rachel sighed because I'm tired of covering for her. She has been boasting about Dylan, like you don't even exist. I couldn't watch it anymore. I swallowed hard as the bitterness clawed at my throat. Did Vanessa know you were planning to mail this? No, she admitted, but she'll find out soon enough. I am sorry, Logan. I hung up without responding. The kitchen felt colder, emptier. My gaze shifted to the anniversary card. Sitting on the counter, I got one up for Vanessa yesterday. The irony was nearly comical. Vanessa has always been lovely, fast with a laugh, fast with an excuse. I had ignored the tiny alterations, the additional attention spent on her looks, late evenings out with buddies. She has been avoiding my contact recently. It all made clear now that I laid my coffee cup down. My grasp tightens. I was not going to play the character of the ignorant. Vanessa, who deceived her spouse, wanted to lie. She wanted to slip about. Great. But I'd make sure that the truth struck her. Like a ton of bricks for now. I needed to keep cool and clever. This was not the moment for conflict. It was time for planning. The home seemed like a stranger's dwelling. I paced the living room. I'm reliving Rachel's words in my brain Vanessa was off track. Probably with Dylan. My fists clenched instinctively, but I forced myself to remain grounded. I could not allow my fury to make me careless. This required accuracy by mid-afternoon. I knew what needed to be done. Vanessa was not going to give me the truth, but I would catch her in the act. It was just a question of time. I could pull together enough to expose her. The first step was to find out where she would be tonight. I browsed over her social media, a selected exhibition of our ideal existence. It was all a deception, and I didn't expect to discover anything there. Then, as a present from the devil himself, a notice came up. Vanessa Lang checked in at Lumentaine Restaurant, a reservation at 8 p.m. Lamentaine is posh and unobtrusive. People go there to impress someone, might hide something I couldn't recall. The last time Vanessa and I were there together, it had to be Dylan. My jaw constricted as I clicked to reserve my own table. Under a pseudonym, of course. By 7.45, I was dressed and out the door. My heart is thumping faster with each mile. When I arrived. The dinner was just as magnificent as I recalled. Polished flooring, soft lighting. The sound of peaceful discussion over clinking drinks. I told the hostess my phony name. She led me to a tiny table, with a fantastic view of the entryway. Vanessa stepped in ten minutes later. She was wearing a crimson dress. I used to enjoy it, because it was meant for me. Tonight, it was for somebody else. Dylan followed, following her. Younger smug wear a suit that shouted, he most likely did not earn the money. They did not even look around. Too engrossed in one another, Vanessa giggled and leaned toward him. I sat still as her hand grazed his arm, watching my teeth grind hard enough to break but I have not moved yet. The table was near enough. I heard fragments of their chat. When the noise in the room decreased, Vanessa's tone was light teasing, like she had no worry in the world. Dylan ordered some costly wine. They toasted to something I couldn't make out. For the next hour I sat there, seething within, yet externally cool, 
studying every contact Vanessa placed her hand on Dylan's. She grinned at him. I hadn't seen these smiles in months. It seemed like viewing a stranger in her skin. At 9.30, I paid my bill. The receipt is still warm in my hand. As I went outdoors, the night air struck me like a slap. However, it wasn't enough to cool the fire developing within. I wasn't done, not by a long stretch. Tonight was only the beginning. I was back at Lamentaine the next evening, this time with a crisper strategy and a colder determination. My seat was located toward the center of the restaurant, tucked barely out of sight, that Vanessa and Dylan would not notice me. Until I wanted them to, I carefully selected it, assuring the conflict would play out. Vanessa arrived first, precisely as I expected. Her red dress was swapped for a sleek. The black one embraced her form. Dylan followed closely following. His arm brushes hers. They were led to a table toward the rear. I did not even attempt to eat the... The sight of them made me lose whatever hunger I had left. They ordered wine again, and Vanessa leaned very close. Dylan said something that made us chuckle. He stretched for her hand across the table. She let him take it. Her wedding band glinted beneath the faint lights, like a horrible prank. I let them to grow comfortable watching every move. Dylan was arrogant, tossing his head back and laughing. He undoubtedly thought he had pulled off the ultimate heist. Vanessa was bright in her face, lit with the type of delight she hadn't been near me in months. That was horrible. The waiter went by, replenishing their cups. I realized it was time to stand, smoothing the front of my shirt, strode across the room, with a purpose that turned heads. As I approached their booth, Vanessa was mid-laugh. Her wine glass is halfway to her lips. Happy anniversary, sweetie. I stated my voice was low, bearing enough weight to make her freeze. Her smile disappeared, replaced with a look of total disbelief. It was almost pleasurable. Dylan's gaze flickered between us. Confusion clouds his haughty smile. Logan Vanessa stammered. Her voice was a tight whisper. Don't stop on my account, I motion to the table. A frigid grin curls my lips. I hate to disrupt such a wonderful evening. Her recovery was too swift. Her lips curled into a rebellious sneer. She sat back in her chair. Cross her arms. What are you doing here? I believe the better question is, what are you doing here? I looked at Dylan, who tried and failed to appear unconcerned about him. Dylan opened his mouth, probably argue some arrogant response. But Vanessa cut him off. Logan, please, don't cause a scene. You're humiliating yourself. I leaned in close. I lowered my voice so only they could hear. That's a lot of money coming from you, sneaking about with a boy toy, while still wearing my ring. Her sneer wavered, but she persisted. Maybe if you weren't as predictable, I would not need the boldness of her comments. Sent a new flood of wrath surging through me. However, I did not let it show. I straightened and gave them both a look of contempt. Enjoy the wine, Vanessa. It's on me. I put a crisp $100 bill on the table. I saw their startled expressions as I went away. As I exited the restaurant, the noise from the dining room swallowed the whispered debate. I did not glance back. The tempest inside me had barely begun. The night wasn't done yet. By the time I arrived home, my plan was already in motion. Vanessa and Dylan's small dinner adventure was not going to remain private for long. Rachel's damning snapshot was still on my phone, along with new recollections of their public displays of affection at the restaurant. That was all I needed to deliver the following blow. I sat down at the kitchen table, my laptop open, my fingers speeding over the keys. Social media would be my battleground tonight. Vanessa had always created the ideal image online. Images of us on vacation, her gushing over anniversaries the occasional, so lucky to have you. A post that suddenly seemed like a smack in the cheek I turned that facade become her demise. I began by uploading Rachel's picture. Join a private group chat with family and close friends. No background, just an image and a short caption. Happy anniversary to me. Perhaps the surprise wasn't for me after all. 
The answers arrived swiftly. Shocked messages raised considerations about fury. Vanessa's sister phoned me almost immediately. Her voice was full with wrath and amazement. I let her vent, confirming what she'd already thought. The photograph spoke louder than words. I then moved to a larger audience. Using an anonymous account, I shared the photo on a local gossip forum, with just enough details to clarify who Vanessa and Dylan were, without identifying them directly. The post caught fire. The comments came in quicker than I could read them. By the time Vanessa got home, the fallout was already spreading. She slammed the door. Her shoes clicked fiercely on the floor. She stormed into the living room. What the heck is this Logan? She yelled, shaking her phone at me. I hadn't even looked up for my laptop. Looks like the reality is finally catching up with you. Her expression contorted into a mixture of rage and desperation. You had no right to share the photo. Do you understand how humiliating this is? Humiliating for you? I stood. My voice rises. What about me? Or did you think, sneaking about with Dylan, would not come back to bite you? She sneered and crossed her arms. This is not what you think. Dylan and I do not. I cut her off going closer. Don't attempt to spin this, Vanessa. I spotted you at the restaurant. I've seen the texts and images. You do not get to fake your way out of this. For the first time, she faltered. Her mouth opened and closed. Her confidence is waning. You are exaggerating this situation. She said weakly. Am I letting out a bitter laugh? Because it appears to me you have been playing home with him for months. Were you intending to tell me? Or perhaps hoping that I wouldn't notice? Without saying anything else, her silence spoke volumes. I turned and went upstairs, left her standing there. My phone rang with alerts all night, messages from friends and family. Some provide support, others demand explanations. Dylan, meanwhile, was a radio-silent coward. The next morning, the devastation was evident. Vanessa has meticulously constructed social circle was in chaos, and Dylan's name was already being whispered across town. It wasn't enough just yet, but that was a start. The dawn light scarcely alleviated the house's tension. Vanessa has slept on the couch. Her phone buzzes every few minutes. With calls and messages, she was attempting to contain the mess, but no one was accomplishing what I had put in motion. Her falsehoods were exposed, and the consequences had only just begun. By mid-morning, I had made my decision. I headed upstairs, grabbed a bag, and started packing her possessions. Every garment, every piece of jewelry, all the little mementos of a life we once shared, I threw them inside the bag with no second thought. When I got back downstairs, Vanessa was seated inside the kitchen, staring at her coffee, that it could provide the answers to her troubles. She glanced up as I put the luggage at her feet. What is this? she questioned. Her voice is already defensive. It's your stuff, I answered plainly. You're not staying here anymore. Her jaw clenched. You can't just toss me out. Logan, this is my house, too. Not anymore, I said. My tone is chilly, like the air between us. You lost that right. You opted to play home with Dylan. Her expression altered. A flash of desperation broke through her rage. Logan, please. Let's speak about this. I made a mistake that we can remedy. We can repair it, I interrupted. Stepping closer, you believe this is something we can repair. You lied to me, embarrassed me. And for what? A cheap fling with a youngster who probably can't even spell. Commitment. She flinched, but I did not stop. This marriage is gone, Vanessa. I'm done being a fool, while you play your small games. Her face hardened again, and she climbed to her feet. Cross her arms. You think you're so virtuous. Don't you feel like the victim here? Perhaps if you hadn't been so dull, I wouldn't have had to search elsewhere. That did it. My composure shattered and I slapped my fist against the table. The boom echoed across the kitchen. Don't attempt to blame it on me. You made your choices, Vanessa. Now you get to live with them. She gazed at me, indignant but quiet. I moved back and pointed to the door. Take your suitcase and depart. If you don't, I'll contact the cops and get you escorted out. For a second, I believed she may fight back. She grabbed the suitcase and stormed out, slammed the door behind her. 
I watched through the window. She tossed the luggage into her car and sped off with her tires shrieking on the pavement. The home was silent again. However, it did not feel like home anymore. It felt like a battlefield after the smoke cleared, scarred but now at peace. Vanessa was gone, and with her everything was poisoned by lies and betrayal. However, there was still work to do. This wasn't over by the next morning. I was awake before dawn, my mind already racing. The house was quiet, but it didn't seem peaceful. It felt empty, like the hollow shell of a life I no longer recognize. Vanessa hadn't returned after I threw her out. And honestly, I didn't care where she went. She had made her choice, and I was now making mine. By the time the courthouse opened, I was standing outside, paperwork in hand, filing for divorce. It was not simply about dissolving the marriage. It was about reclaiming my life. I wanted her out, not only from my house, but of my existence. No more falsehoods, no more manipulating, no more faking. The clerk hardly looked at me when she accepted the documents, stamping them with a dull thud that felt oddly final. I walked out with a copy of the filing, folded it nicely and placed it inside my jacket. It was official now. The end was in motion. Vanessa contacted me later that afternoon. I almost didn't answer, but curiosity got the best of me. Logan, she began her voice quiet, nearly begging. Can we just discuss Pialos talk? I stated my voice was frigid. Regarding what, Vanessa? How you lied to me and embarrassed me, or how you tossed away everything we created for a fling with some moron. Who doesn't even care about you? She paused, and for a second I thought she may weep. Finally, she said, I made a mistake. I was bored, Logan. You were so remote. I did not want for things to happen this way. I laughed angrily, bored. That's your excuse. You were not bored when you were creeping about. Were you lying to my face? Don't offend me, Vanessa. I still adore you. She spoke hurriedly, despair seeping into her voice. We can solve this. I'll stop seeing Dylan. I'll do whatever it takes. No, I interrupted. You don't get to come back now. You made your decision, Vanessa, and now you got to live with the consequences. She attempted to protest, but I hung up, cutting her off mid-sentence. My hand squeezed around the phone. I pushed myself to let it go. She wasn't worth my rage anymore. She was not worth anything. That night, the consequences extended even wider. Dylan had begun distancing away from Vanessa, too, probably afraid of the publicity their affair was receiving. Word had reached his parents. According to what I had heard, his mother, Diane, didn't take it well. Vanessa was losing everything, and that was no less than she deserved. I sat on the porch and had a glass of bourbon, looking out over the calm street. For the first time in weeks, I experienced a sense of clarity. This was not the life I had envisioned, but it was the one I had left with. For the first time, I felt all right with it. The house sold faster than I anticipated, a young couple bought it within a week of its listing, excited to begin their own life in an area that had become a battlefield. For me, packing up felt therapeutic. Every box I glued closed was like closing up the remnants of Vanessa's falsehoods. I relocated to a small apartment across town, a location with clean walls and no memories that haunt me. It wasn't much, but it was mine, and it was all I needed. I spent my first night in silence, sitting on the terrace with a bottle of bourbon. Watched the city lights flicker like distant stars. I hadn't felt this type of tranquility in years. Vanessa, on the other hand, mutual buddies weren't doing well. Those who had not yet broken connections with her informed me she was striving to maintain appearances. Dylan had left her totally, and word spread across town. Even his family had turned against her. She was alone just as she deserved. The divorce was finalized within a few months clean, efficient, merciless. I'd made sure the paperwork detailed everything, the affair, the lies, the betrayal. She didn't even try to contest it, knowing she didn't have a leg to stand on when the judge signed the papers. It felt like the final weight lifting off my shoulders one afternoon, 
Rachel stopped by my apartment unannounced. I hadn't seen her since the fallout, but she looked different, lighter, freer. She handed me a bottle of wine and sat across from me, her eyes searching mine. I'm sorry, Logan, she said. For not telling you sooner, I should have said something the moment I found out about Vanessa and Dylan. I shrugged, pouring us both a glass. You did what you thought was right at the time, I'm not holding it against you. She smiled faintly, lifting her glass to new beginnings. To new beginnings. I echoed, clinking my glass against hers. Life moved on slowly but steadily. I threw myself into work, started going to the gym again. Even picked up old hobbies I'd forgotten about each day. Felt like a step forward, away from the wreckage Vanessa had left behind one evening as I sat on my balcony watching the sun dip below the horizon. I realized something. I wasn't angry anymore. Vanessa Dillon. The betrayal. It was all just a chapter in my life. A lesson. Learned. I was stronger now, smarter, and more self-assured than I'd ever been. The road ahead was mine to walk, and for the first time in a long while, I felt like I was headed in the right direction. Subscribe so you don't miss news stories on the channel.